Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you. I hope this time it works since uh, I tried to go live before and uh, apparently there was a, a misconnection. There's so many people on their computers doing so many Zoom and on -call, uh, online calls. So I think there is more people coming live nowadays than ever before. So welcome uh, to this episode of Heal Talk Tuesdays. Um, hello, hi, Arina John. Hello, Chris. How are you doing? How are you doing, by the way, coping with all this? Um, I know so many are getting uh, cabin fever, being stuck. There are so many who are feeling frustrated and flustered and uh, and yet there are those who are loving this so hi uh, claudia is watching do you see me uh well uh is the lighting good is this uh, good or do i have to rotate the phone uh i need to know that um watching uh hi robert how are you? Hello, Claudia. Um, Arine, would you please let me know if the phone is correct or do I need to turn it around? Ah, see? No. Thank you. You know, I keep saying this and... Uh, all right, I'm going to leave it right here and speak to you from here. Hello, Claudia, much better, right? So I do everything to learn about this and everyone tells me how to do this and I steal, um, but that's okay. It's everything is a learning process. I've come to learn one thing. There is no perfection and the perfection is in this, learning how to do things and um, maybe failing it, but um, the fluster, being flustered and all that, and that's okay. So, hi, Jenny John. Hello to all of you who are here. Now I have to do something completely different and put something else in here. Wow, this is not what I thought it would be. I thought I would be so ready to do this. There you go. Hmm, what can I put in here that holds this together? Perfect. So, do you realize that I am not technology savvy? And you're back. Hooray. Hooray. Yes. Hooray. If I can only get this and not touch this, then I will be very well set. Hey, pretty girl. Hi, Kathy. How are you? I got this working and I have it all set. Wow. <sighs> now, now let's get to doing this. I feel as if um, I went through this entire technology thing just to get myself set. So, hello, Ashod. Hi, Adrian. No worries. I'll cut out the bloopers. <laughs> or maybe we can do a whole segment on Lisa's bloopers on technology. Well, how are you all doing? Let's get back to where we are. I've been getting calls. I've been doing Skype. I've been doing everything on folks who are literally eating a lot of, and what I call emotional eaters, stress eaters. Are you going through this? Are you eating out of anxiety, out of stress, out of boredom? Hey, um, so that's, that's what I wanna talk. Now that's a fun idea. Which part? Uh, oh, Lisa's bloopers, that would be too much. That would be too many Lisa's bloopers. 
That's me, Arine. Yes. So I want to hear from you. I want to know what is it that I can help you with today? Today's Heal Talk Tuesday, it's literally, why do we eat when we feel stress? Why is it that we hold on to, uh, we grab something to eat? And in, I myself have been doing so much better through all this. Hi, Norajan, how are you? Why is it that I have been doing? Because when I am at work, I think I munch more than when I am at home. At home, I even drink more water than I drink in my office. Because when I get to do some work and I am working, oh God. when I am working, I zoom into work and this is not fun. I am so sorry, everyone. I am so sorry for this. Yes, feeling anxious. I think I am feeling anxious for this not working. I have the opposite problem, which is what? When you are stressed, you eat less because that's what a lot of people do. Uh, there are folks who eat less when they are stressed and there are folks who eat more when they are stressed either word either way um i feel like i'm going to do this there we go now i can literally sit right here and speak without touching anything <sighs> there are folks who eat more when stressed sad angry upset and there are ones trying to drink more water limit the coffee drink more tea and i'm eating two substantial meals a day that is the most profound answer there is because you are conscious you are aware i think you have a good sense of being centered and what is good for you now there are those who are just the opposite when they get into that stress mode it's uh, going into this spiral of not knowing what to do how to do uh, a few chocolate pretzels treats and that is great because you always want to uh, reward yourself instead of uh, deny yourself because who wants to deny themselves anything in life and yet having a better sense of awareness and control is the key and that's that's what I help my clients uh, I just got an email from a client of mine who has been with me for over nine weeks helping to drop weight she's dropped 29 pounds in three months and to her it's the biggest success that there is not because she has dropped the weight and i usually call drop the weight not losing the weight because loss in itself is a very sad thing and who wants to be sad right but she's dropped 29 pounds in over three months. But what she has gained is more confidence. She has gained a sense of self-accomplishment. She has gained a sense of, I can do this. She has gained the respect of her family members and her two children because they've been looking at her as a like a source of motivation she is the person that they look up to for everything right and now she is proud of herself the biggest thing she has received is self pride that she can do this she is happier than ever before 
Not only she can fit in the clothes and the size that she wanted to, but her self-esteem has expanded. The relationship she has with her children, that she can go on a walk with them, that she went shopping with her uh, teenage daughter, and she could even try things and feel good, that she went shopping and her daughter said, Mom, let's go shopping. You know, the point that she made was, I cried because my daughter said, let's go shopping. And she wanted to go shopping with me. And she is not, um, she's just not sad to go shopping with me. That she is proud of what I have accomplished and what I am. And she deemed, she, instead of going out shopping with a friend, she asked to go with me. You know, that... Of course, the shopping part was about a month ago and she sent me the email and she, she was explaining all this. That in itself is the biggest accomplishment that I can say by coaching, helping her through this process has come. The beauty, the sense of her feeling good about herself and knowing that she always mattered as a mother and now she's more proud of herself and going out with her daughter is a beautiful thing. It's not that her daughter never loved her, but now she feels the love. She feels that I have done something and I am so happy that my daughter sees it. So I want to see oops i touched this thing oh my god lisa stay away from the phone i can't scroll so all i'm gonna do is just stay away from the phone i want to know if there is something that has pained you and that i can help you and if you are have tried everything else and not being able to accomplish it. What is something that I can help you with? Um, of course, uh, I can see some of the threat that it's coming. That um, does this resonate with you? If um, if you have done things and find it difficult to take. The next step from where you are especially nowadays being cooped up at home and just like this friend of mine who watched the news at early morning and she felt more upset because she feels that she's not in control or another friend of mine that i was talking to having a conversation while we're driving she was driving and I was going home after doing a little bit of a shopping. And she said, I, I am such an empath that I am crying for everyone that is going through. And I could hear her munching. And I said, and what are you doing? She says, oh my God, I've probably gained 10 pounds in the last 10 days. So it's not only the eating, but she's eating from frustration. She's eating because of she feels out of control. So there are so many things we can do in life um, that gives us a sense of control. Realizing that we cannot help everyone except ourselves. And another person feels flustered and upset because she cannot see her mother who is in the assistant living. Those are things that we truly feel out of control. 
But when, because we are out of control and we cannot help those that are in need or in a situation that it's, you cannot help them immediately, it does not mean that you have to go and eat or drink out of proportion and it's called self-sabotage. Because the replication of that is you're going to resent yourself, you're not going to like yourself. So that's what happens when we feel out of control, the self-inflicting things. So what have you done that I can help you? If I don't have cigarettes, I'll eat. And if I don't eat, I bite my nails. It's an endless train. Well, cigarettes, when you put it in your mouth, it's like suppressing emotions. Eating, in a way, is suppressing emotions. Biting nails is frustration. So eating, smoking, chewing, all comes from feeling frustrated for something. Now, instead of doing the things that it's more negative and punishable, it's self-punishable, even though it feels good at the moment, what do you believe you can do that will feed you more positiveness and more accomplishment? I know you can go out for a hike or walk around the block. If you can journal the things that is frustrating you, probably can help you. Um, if you can express it, find someone to connect with and share the information can help you. So the ings that we do the eating, drinking, biting, it's all self-hurt. Turn it to something that works better for you. You can always reach out to me. You know this. You can always find someone to reach out. Through this COVD, being stuck at home, and feeling as if we can't help another person, feeling depressed or out of control, recognizing the feelings that you are feeling, truly, is what can you do to help someone else? Come out of your skin. Come out of where you are and see how you can reach out to help someone else. And that's why I'm here. What can I help you with? First and foremost, uh, see you tonight. Bye, Jenny. Um, I have someone who is in tears because their loved ones, they cannot reach a loved one. I have someone who's eating more angry. I have someone who contacted me and said, my husband is working from home and I never knew this, this side of him and I can't shut the door fast enough not to hear the way he works and everything because I'm trying to do my work on this side and the proximities are too small. Realizing that we are getting, we are threading on uncharted territories and yet we are in such small proximity that we have to learn new things about our loved one maybe our husbands, maybe our children. The children are seeing another side of you that probably they have not seen. And how you manage your frustration and how you manage your being upset or sadness 
is what they are learning from you. So when things get really tough is when I go into this point of, how do I say, more calm. When things are more um, upset, upsetting and chaotic, I find more calm within myself. So, hello precious, how are you? Hi Jean. Uh, Jean, long time no see dear. Hello Tina. Uh, we are talking about how we cope with what is happening now and how so many people are um, the calmest when things are tough and chaotic. Exactly. Um, but how do you help someone else? How do you reframe and help someone else? I know I help with people who are going into panic and anxiety. And when, from the moment I pick up the phone, I give them this sense of I'm holding space for you because of I shift my voice into a more calming, that hypnotic voice as some call it. And then I hold space for them to vent out of what is happening. I have someone who is contacting me via Skype from Philadelphia someone who is in the financial world and he needed space for me to hold for him so he can vent out his anger and resentment and his panic because of he is holding space for his clientele that have big number portfolios so realizing that we all have gifts to help someone else. One thing I also do that may be helpful to you is it's even in my book, in my Stand Up to Slim Down, I have techniques and tools that I can, I can also share. I have this nine week program that I can, I'll be more than happy to share and gift you if you text me at 818-221-2797 and I will send you this, um, this entire program. It's a module, a nine week module that you can do on your own to help more to de-stress and become more conscious of what you are eating, how you are behaving, how to control eating food, realizing that you can cut the food in half, that you're not hoarding food. All that gives you a sense of accomplishment and knowing that you are more in control of not only your body, your mind, of your emotions, that you can handle things more I even gifted my audio recording for a whole group that are going through stress and anxiety at this moment. By all means, text me and I'll send you my stress no more audio recording so you can de-stress in the comfort of your home. I am more than happy to gift you and anyone you know, by all means, even you share it. Um, because I know times are tough right now. And the clients that I have, my high ticket price clients, the one-on-one -on -one sessions that I do with my clients, we dig deep in. We dig deeper in to see why is it that they are going into this uh, full-on outbursts of anger just because they are home and and they cannot handle this i help those clients but that's a whole different but if it is wanting to de-stress and everything although if you go on my website you can click in one of the gifts is a small little um 
relax, un unwind, I'll gift you that so you can listen to this in the comfort of your home and relax and share it with the loved ones that they are going through this frustration and they need to relax. There are so many ways that you can center yourself and calm yourself. The self-help of knowing that you can manage. Um, when we feel all that, that as if we are out of control is exactly when we need to be more in control. How you do this is, you know how they said in order for you to check and see if you are, if your lungs are okay and your breath, this is one of the ways you're supposed to hold your nose, breathe in, hold four, three, two, and then exhale from the other side through your nose. You inhale, hold four counts, and then exhale. And then as you breathe from this side now, hold four counts and exhale through the other nose. This exercise in itself, if you do it 10 times in a row, automatically opens your lungs and your chest. You're only breathing from your nose, not from your mouth. Your mouth does not inhale nor exhale on this one exercise. This truly opens up everything. And by doing that, if you only close your eyes and become one with your breath, the sound of your breath automatically will bring you to a sense of oneness and calms you down. So I don't know why, but we are all connected in here and uh, I'm seeing a message that it's going to disconnect and I don't know why, but so that's one technique. Another technique I want to share with you is for you to realize that you are not alone. No matter what happens, you are part of this oneness. There is this entire kindness, oneness that is happening. That you are safe in your body. That you are safe at all times. And if you are in fear, all you have to do is reach out via Facebook, via email, via text. So many are sending uh, jokes around and everything to lighten someone's life and brighten someone's day. But at this very moment, if you are suffering because worrying about your parents or loved one who is sick at home, do you really believe if, if you get more upset, more frustrated or angry, that is one way of helping them? Because it is not. The best way to help them is truly to reach out and let them know that you are okay. Because two people being un-okay is not going to help the situation. Worry in a way is thinking that I cannot do anything and yet you can. By a phone call and for them to be connected with you via your voice, it gives them a sense of comfort. If you text someone and let them know just that you are reaching out to help them, 
gives them a sense of comfort. Remembering someone that you have not talked in a long time and reaching out to them gives them a sense of comfort. And how do you comfort you? By realizing that you do matter. That if you are sick, to stay home and safeguard yourself. And please, refrain yourself from watching the media, the news and everything at 5 o'clock in the morning or 11 o'clock at night, right before you are going to bed or early in the morning to start your day with the negativity. Someone mentioned when, why is it that someone is not talking about 114,000 people who have recovered and are feeling better? Yes. There are so many other good things that are happening that surrounding you. Remember that there is someone giving birth at this very moment. That someone is saying thank you to someone because they reached out to them. Someone just did a shopping for someone who dropped the food over. There are so many things we can be grateful. You can do your Zumba at home. You can do your exercises at home. You can start a new business at home. You can reach out and hold space for someone from home. We can do so much that brings us together. And the next time that you want to eat because you are emotionally eating, I want you to stop for a second and say, how is this helping me feel the void, that hole inside me that I need? Because instead of that, I can have a glass of water and then get back to creating something, playing with my children. I know so many are pulling hair for being with kids. So let me share one thing. Um, had a girlfriend who was talking to me just a few nights ago over the weekend. And she said, I am at my, I'm pulling my hair, I'm at my ends meet because um, I need to go back to work. I can't be stuck with the kids. It's just too much. I don't know what else to do with them. One week was more than enough. And the complain and complain. And I said, do you recall just a few weeks ago, you were so overwhelmed with work. You were so overwhelmed with stress, your boss, everything that you said you need a vacation and you need time just to be with your friends and shut everything else out. Well, now she is laid off and she says one week is more than enough. And here's the thing. Be careful of the wishes you make because our wishes do become reality. So if we wanted to be with our children, find the best part of you as a mother to come up with all these creative things that when you were complaining about stressing at work and working 12 hours, 13 hours, and not having time with your children, now you do. So instead of all the complaints that there is, why don't we just take this time and make the best out of it? How? It's uh, the chicken soup, right? One of my friends is creating the most sous chefs. She's a sous chef creating all these beautiful things when she's taking a break, posting those pictures. And now literally she can be hired as a chef, as a caterer. It's a whole different world nowadays. 
Well, but we have to stop this complaint and blame thing and find the means to find the beauty, the creation. Another person said, I haven't talked to my husband and, and another person with my wife in such a long time. Yes, learn something each other. Take this time to know one another. There's been relationships that have been disconnected because of work, because of someone else, because of all these extra things. The relationship with you, what makes you happy, what makes you sad, what makes you angry, what brings you joy. Those are the questions that so many people have not sit and looked at. You can write a whole book about yourself and what you have been going through learning about yourself of what has been triggering you let me give you an example of what has happened in my home this morning um every tuesday from 10 to 11 45 i have this zoom call this coaching that i have signed up with yes i also sign up with others and i hire high-end uh, coaches to help me with high-end skills yeah today after doing this technology you may not believe that I am learning anything but you know it's learning from my mistakes and knowing that I'm not perfect um, so the train of thought was uh, as I am about to walk out of the house my mom says she calls me in and she says I started coloring my hair. Would you please finish the coloring of my? And I've got exactly half an hour before being in my office, shutting the door, starting the computer, doing everything, and being present for my coaching call. And I said, of course. So I go and I do it real fast. And, and she's like, what's your rush? And I said, I'm supposed to go to the office. She's like, well, why didn't you tell me? Why are you doing everything? And I said, I'll do this. I can do this. Hold. Let's calm down. Let me finish. As I finish, I did it on time. And I said goodbye. As I am walking out, she says, you didn't tell me you're going to the office. You know, she feels as if she didn't know. And I felt as if she didn't hear me when I shared it in the morning over breakfast, over coffee. What do I do with that moment? I came back and I said, it's okay. I've got a lot of work. I'll see you later. I'm by myself in the office. Be safe. And I walked out. I could have been upset. I could have banged the door. I could have been more flustered with her. And yet I shifted this entire thing. Instead of being more upset, it was kinder. It was holding space for both of us that I'm not upset. And I didn't leave home upset for her to continue on that being upset and I walked out and I drove, got to the office five minutes before the call. So when we take more in control, realizing there are certain things you can control and there is things around the world that you cannot control and taking one step at a time and knowing I can do this and finish this project, finish this thought, and then I can do something else. If I am eating, do I need this? Or is this just feeling an emptiness because I am frustrated 
flustered, upset, angry, sad, or bored. And then if you are eating it or drinking, whatever it is, do just a little bit, put it aside, continue doing something different that feeds you, enhances you, makes you feel good, and then go back and pick it up. So one, become aware of what you are doing, how you are doing. Two, reach out to someone and let them know that you're thinking about them. Hold space for them to share. Three, take small little bites of taking control of doing whatever it is that you are doing. So everything is compartmentalized instead of feeling overwhelmed. Four, know and believe that you can. Five, stay in prayer. And know this too shall pass. And may all your dreams become of a reality. And just like today, recognizing that we all make mistakes. But what's the worst thing that happened today? I got flustered because I was not technology savvy in the beginning. But my message, what I do, how I help through hypnotherapy or anger management or stress management, the work that I do, maybe my one-on-one -on -one sessions is not for everyone, but I have other offers. I can send you a recording for you to listen to the recording and find peace, calm in the privacy of your own home. Or you can even send me a text at 818-221-2797 and I'll give you a module and my nine week module that you can do at home to drop weight. There are so many things that I can share and give. I'm here for you. Hello, John. How are you, sir? How is retirement? Are you bored? Or do you find ways to help someone else? Irina John, I love you as well. Hello, Rima. Hi, Karen, a woman of grace who helps so many others in life. Thank you. Have a great day. Stay well. Same to you, Edith. Thank you, Gem E. Um, Look forward to seeing you all. And any of you ladies, uh, I go live. Uh, used to be in the mornings. Now I go live at night. Hold space for having a network. We're going to start doing that as a Zoom so we can all see each other, help one another, and bring more profound connections and value to helping all of us through this COVD and staying home, what I call in vacation. God bless you all and may the universal light surround you. Until next week, see you then. Bye-bye. This is Lisa.